This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relation podcast. Since 2015, I am here in the secondary studio, which is called the Pop Pod here at Pod Populi, podcast for the people. Uh, I'm at the one in Scottsdale, Arizona. It could not be hotter. I mean, maybe it could be hotter, but I don't, it just, God. Um, But I am excited today because it's a few weeks later than we normally do this. Um, And as you guys know, uh, all of our podcast episodes should be evergreen whenever you listen to them. So if you were listening to this in January of 2025, first of all, catch up. Go listen to the other 400 episodes first. Catch up. But I am recording this during the onset of the summer of 2023. So again, if you're listening to this down the road, you'll be like, oh, it's such quaint times in 2023. I went back and listened to some of our, our COVID era podcasts a while ago, and I was like, God, this stuff we focused on. Um, but this today is our annual summer loving mailbag where we take on uh, various issues, quirks, themes that are uniquely related to the summertime. Uh, This year, I put out a little APB a couple weeks ago to ask you guys to send me things that are related to summer activities and or sports, things that your partner, spouse, aspiring boyfriend, girlfriend does that perhaps particularly uh, flummoxes or annoys you. And uh, I did not want to take this on myself, uh, so I needed a pro. I needed, uh, first of all, a voice of reason. I I needed somebody who is fairly... um, familiar with activities and or sports. She is the host of the very, very popular Sports Will Save Us All podcast, although sports may not save some of these relationships. Sasha Graham, how are you? I'm doing well. That was a stellar introduction. I'm so happy to be here. So first of all, the, the la- if you're listening to this in order, the last episode we did was a, a revisiting of ghosting that is a very, very... Um, contentious and popular topic. And I asked Sasha if she listened to that episode and she had, and she had an opinion on ghosting that I had not thought of. Why don't you like it? Well, so here's the thing. I totally get everything that you say, like what we owe other people when it comes to being out on one date or two dates or chatting online. I get it. But for me, when I was dating, because I'm happily married now, but when I was dating, it was about efficiency. And if I was left waiting around for somebody to get back to me and I'm like, maybe there's something there, maybe there isn't, like, just let me know. Just be like, you know what? Not into it, not feeling it. And then I can move on. Purgatory that you're in, not sharing, it's a time waster. I hadn't considered that. Very Mm -hmm. voice of reason. You're (laughs) right on that. Um, I, I'm not sure in the moment somebody can let you know how they feel. Sometimes they process it a couple of days, but there should be a, like a five day limit. So you're not going weeks and weeks. Like, is this guy going to call me? Can I go out with somebody else? What, you know, right. you're right on that. Hey, thanks. Eliminate the gray area. So uh, off to a good start. Uh, so there's your addendum to the, uh, <laughs> ghosting will save us all podcast. <laughs> all right. So we got uh, a whole shitload of, um, uh, submissions from you guys. As always, we picked six. We have three from the men, three from the ladies. Uh, I've not looked at these, and Sasha certainly has not heard these. Uh, we are going to read them and give our take on them, which may or, we may or may not agree. You guys may, may, may or may not agree, but um, they're a fresh batch right out of the hopper. So oh. first of all, the first one is from Sarah Beth in Renton, Washington. We came to your show in Seattle two years ago on our first date. Yeah. And now we are engaged. Great, right? Here is the issue. Seattle, Seattle's, uh, sorry, you typed wrong, uh, Sarah Beth. Seattle is known for great summers, which makes up for the rest of the year. But all my fiance wants to do during the summer is fish. Like every weekend, salmon this, trout that. He will just stand in a river in eastern Washington and fly fish for hours. It is literally our only time to do anything outside. And he keeps saying, why don't you just come? It's fun and relaxing. It's neither. It's dumb. I hate it. And I am seriously (laughs) thinking this is a deal breaker for me. I know I shouldn't change him and he loves what he loves, but I am better than the fish. He should want to be with me. 
Oh, Sarah Beth, I agree. You are better than the fish, baby <laughs> You're girl. You're certainly better than the trout, but there's good <laughs> salmon up there. I don't know about that. Um, I agree. It, this is a tough one because the fishing is a uh, a relaxing escape. I don't do it. I even think it's mean. Catch and release fishing, I think, is mean. I think you get a hook in the face mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, I threw him back. It sucks for the fish. Eat yeah. it or don't eat it. That's me. That's a different uh, podcast, though. Um, it is true about some of these poor weather things. You are on the clock. You have about 10 weekends mm-hmm. to do stuff you want to do. You can't just spend like, this is my thing and you have to dive in or not, right? So here's the thing that I find really interesting about it is that I would think that it was his escape from her, except that he's inviting her along, right? That's true. A lot of these guys want to be like, I want to get away from her. He's invite. He could be inviting her along knowing that she doesn't like it. (laughs) That's a different thing. You guys are engaged though. So I am surprised that this must be, you came to our show two years ago. Thank you. A lot of couples get engaged from coming to the great love debate, by the way. Um, so you went through this last summer. My answer on this, and we've had some versions on this before is there really needs to be a compromise. So you'd be like, listen, there are 10 weekends in the summer, do four. Well, but here's the thing. It's Seattle and the weather is getting worse and worse. So your summers are going to get shorter and shorter. Eventually, it's only going to be two weeks a year that she has to worry about him going fishing. <laughs> well, I don't understand. It, it's not freezing there. Why can't he fish in the rain? Uh, I mean, it's pretty miserable. The fishing? I mean, being outside when it's the, that see, cold. See, the Seattle people, I've talked about this before. Seattle people pretend it doesn't rain. They don't use umbrellas. They just put on like the REI mm-hmm. raincoat and like, yeah, it's right. fine. It's misting. Mm-hmm. Why can't he fish in the rain? I mean, maybe he does. Maybe it's just that it's the summer that's the issue because she wants to be out doing fun outdoor things. Right. Well, I think, oh, you think he fishes all year round maybe. and she doesn't care because she's like, uh, go do that. I'm, I'm inside. I'm going to watch a movie. Right? Well, let's just say there's 10 weekends here. I think on mm-hmm. something like this, you don't want him to fish, to quit fishing altogether. I think fisherman guy, 20 fishing weekends a year is plenty. And you give the other 32 to her. Mm-hmm. And if you're just like, no, I really have to do this. You know, what are you going to do when you guys have kids? Or if you have kids, you're going to have to do the, the soccer tournaments on Saturdays and get out of the river, right. fella. Um, I think she's right. I think she is better than the fish. I think she has every right to say, stop with the fishing. Ooh, I, is- I do. I'm fine. If you're dating somebody, I would be like, listen, and somebody's like, this is really something that I don't want you to do and do with them. I'm fine with that. I'm like, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. I think what she wants is more important than the fish. This is fishing's fishing's dumb. <laughs> Go to a, a grocery store and okay, eat Sarah the Beth, fish. I am going to give you my very practical <laughs> advice, which is that you need to find something that you love there. So wherever it is that he's going fishing, it's beautiful. It's outside. It's a beautiful day. Find a way that you can enjoy it and do something different while you're there. Like, because if this is somebody you love and he loves fishing, like you don't want to love him in spite of that. You want to love him that part so of him you're, too. You're on his side, sort of. Oh, do we need to pick sides? I'm just surprised. Um, I just think that relationships. Are you pro fishing? Do you like to fish? Um, no, I'm not a big. I'm not a big. Have fisher. you ever so baited I'm a relating hook? to Sarah Beth here. Like oh. I would much rather go and bring my book, and then he comes over and gives me a kiss on the forehead, like and shows me his big fish that he, he caught. He smells like gonna- fish. <laughs> now, to be fair, it is lovely. The, 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 the Pacific Northwest mm-hmm. in the summer during that time mm-hmm. in the rivers, you know, Columbia River, all that kind of stuff, Puget Sound all of it, uh, is nice. Mm-hmm. And there are things that she could do is read a book by the, by the side of the river and go, have you caught anything yet, honey? <laughs> like I, it, it Scare is. all the fish away. <laughs> it just shouldn't be. I have a problem with every weekend. That's my issue. Mm-hmm. Every weekend is rough. Well, do you think it really is every weekend? Well, she wrote to us and I believe her. I'm on your side, Sarah Beth. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I hope that, that answers your question. I think that is a fairly reasonable compromise that you had. I mm-hmm. gave a compromise. Sasha gave a compromise. See if there's an answer in there for you, Sarah Beth. Okay, next one. Do you know how they have that 4th of July hot dog eating contest in New York every year? Well, this girl I am dating is a total smoke show, and she is in fantastic shape, and she is a competitive eater. Mostly crab legs, but also oysters and key lime pie. Very specific things. Pretty much anything slimy and slippery she can suck down. You would think it's a turn-on, but it's not. It's fucking gross. It's such a weird thing to stumble upon when you date somebody. She's great in every other way, but she wants to drive to these summer contests, and I don't know how to tell her it's a turn-off. So how do I tell her? That's from not shuck 
shucking in Annapolis. Oh, not oh. shucking. This is easy. You just go fishing with Sarah Beth. Yeah, Beyonce. I know. <laughs> that is a weird thing. Contest. You know, I used to date a girl who could suck down a whole bunch of crab legs too. Was ever. Now I am um, pro competitive eating. A little secret fantasy of mine is like, I want to know. I don't think I could do Joey Chestnut level of, but I think I'd take down 20 hot dogs. I think I could. Oh, I um, used me. to have at the Fat Burger in Santa Monica, California, there used to be a little uh, plaque on the wall that I was the uh, King Burger champion. Are you, are you attracted, ladies, to that? I was the <laughs> King Burger uh, eating contest champion. I won. Ew. I won an eating contest. How, you're many, you. how many did you eat? It was the time thing. It was the thing that, like, not only if you ate, it was free. It was like, mm-hmm. you, and, I, and I had fries. So take that. <laughs> shocking. Um, girl. And again, this, I don't want this to be sexist girl, competitive eating for crab legs, oysters, and key lime pie. I think that's a dating attribute. I think good. Um, that is very specific. I don't know how to tell her it's a turnoff. I think you don't tell her it's a turnoff. I just think like, I don't want to distract you. Uh, it's a competition. I root you well. I'll, 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 I'll meet you in the car. I don't know. What do you, you can't tell her not to do it. I don't know. I'm a little horrified. Like, I, I, <laughs> I feel like the fishing thing, I was way like that sort of makes sense to me. But like key lime pie, like she eats as many key lime pies as yeah, possible. Yeah, in like five minutes or whatever. You know, it's key lime pie does take a lot of chewing. It's a lot of sucking. The oyster, that's a very specific. <laughs> so I don't think she's good in the chewing stuff. She's good in the sucking stuff, which is props to you, not shucking in Annapolis. <laughs> um, she looks good. She see most of the competitive eating people, the mm-hmm. real champs, they're not the heavy people. They are the stomach is a muscle. The throat is a muscle. Um, I think you. she does it. That's her thing. Uh, I think most people would think it's cool. No? Ooh, I call deal breaker on this one. In a girl? I think it's cool in a girl. I like it. Really? I, well, only because that means I get to eat whatever I want. So maybe that's me. <laughs> so maybe you should date her. Send her my way. Um, <laughs> Well, what do you, how does he tell her? What do you, what was your answer to that? How well, do you tell her? I don't know. According to you, we can just ghost her and move on and yeah, never, I think never he be can. in touch with her again. He does seem to like her. That's a turnoff. How do you say what you do is a turnoff? Or do you just distance yourself on competition weekend? There can't be that many competitions. I mean, this kind of goes back to what I was saying. Like you love the whole person or you don't love them at all. Like, I mean, if this is something that he really can't abide by, then I think that this is something that I mean, somebody else. Well, how do you say, like, listen, you do it. I just can't watch it. Do your thing, and then we'll meet up later. Well, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying that he needs to tell her. Like, he's implying that she needs to stop Stop doing doing it. it. Yeah. And if you. I don't think there's big bucks in the key lime eating world. But if she loves it. You're going to tell somebody not to do something. Well, this gets back to your podcast. Something Mm -hmm. about this type of competition, Mm -hmm. not just the taste of the food, because people aren't really taste, they're just sucking it down. It's a competitive Jones that she has and it satisfies it. It's probably also a community and it's something she's really good at. Yeah, and, and she, she feels some pride in it. I don't mm-hmm. think you can tell her to stop. Um, I don't think you need to tell her it's a turnoff. I think you just see where this relationship goes. You have to get through probably, this is a seasonal thing. Like <laughs> how many, she can't do a lot of them because they can't do a lot of them. Mm-hmm. It is hard on the body. So like three or four times you just um, go fishing with the other guy and you don't go to the, the uh, oyster eating contest. But don't you think that it's probably something that she talks about and that she's excited about? I think she's, she's probably proud of fair. it. She's proud of it, right? So say so- your husband wanted to do this. And he's like, I'm going to get involved in the uh, the sushi eating contest. I think I can eat. Do you want to come? Well, I mean, but for me, it's not a turnoff. So, oh, okay. So, so for him, it's, yeah, it's too fucking bad. Like, <laughs> she's a total smoke show. You said your words, and she's in great shape. Like, it's a weird thing, but say she was a sword swallower. Like, you know, I don't know. You don't want to watch it because it seems painful. Let her do her thing. Cover mm-hmm. your eyes, fella. Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. a, there's worse things. I agree. I'm on her. Agree. I'm on her side. Just mm-hmm. buck. You don't even need to tell her to turn off. Just just distance yourself from the competition weekends, mm-hmm. and then see what happens. Have yourself a slice of pie. Here's what's going to happen: yeah. she's going to meet somebody at one of those competition weekends who loves this part of her and thinks that it's yeah. really bad. I think it's good though that she has something she's passionate about, and, and it is competitive. Mm-hmm. The fishing guy. I don't think he's in fishing competitions, but you know, okay. <laughs> Yet. All right, that's a weird one. Good. I like that <laughs> one. Good for her. I'd like to see her. Okay. Uh, she can come the, on my podcast. The, the next one. Yes. <laughs> what is it about you? Well. Have you had a, a competitive eater on? No, but do you actually, after it a sport? 
apply. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's hard and it's physical and it's competitive. You and could argue that Joey Chestnut is better at his sport than anybody else is at their sport in the world. I mean, he's incredible. He's so much better than everybody else. Can you imagine the mental game that's happening there? Yeah, I know. I, I, I mean, he makes big bucks. Um, the, the other guy who used to be good, Kobayashi, mm-hmm. the Japanese yeah, guy, yeah. he got like a uh, Jothritis, like he got, like he hurt himself. He couldn't continue. Oh. Couldn't go on. But Joey Chestnut's done this fifteen years. Injured reserve. Getting old. Yeah. All right. Next one. Oh God. What is it with cornhole? I get that it's a fun activity, but it isn't an all day activity. Somewhere along the line, life became pickleball and cornhole for every guy over thirty. It's ridiculous. It's summer, and we are in bikinis, and we are hot, and we are just standing there watching you throw bean bags and drink Coors Lights. Why is this a thing, and how do we make it not a thing? <laughs> Melanie Facebook page. Uh, the explosion of I'll take this cornhole and pickleball first. Mm-hmm. Pickleball's not happening around the pool, so I don't think there's bikini people at pickleball or whatever, mm-hmm. but pickleball is huge. huge. Mm-hmm. It used to be an older person thing, and now it is It's an everybody. all-person thing. It's mm-hmm. an all-person thing. Mm-hmm. For sure. And it's only going to get bigger. Mm-hmm. You're not going to win the pickleball thing. That being said, I saw cornhole on ESPN the other day, so I'm not sure that's going to... But people do play cornhole for hours. Mm-hmm. Give me the bikinis. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Um... I don't know how you make it not a thing, and it, it really is sort of everywhere that there's a – you go to a tailgate, there's mm-hmm. cornhole. Mm-hmm. You go to uh, – most apartment complexes now have cornhole. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'm pro bikini, so I, I, I'm on your side with that. I don't think you're going to make it not a thing. I don't know. All right. So here's my thoughts on cornhole. <laughs> First of all, it's a blast. I totally get it. Like, I love cornhole. So – I think that it's the old, if you can't beat them, join them situation where if, uh, start playing cornhole in your bikini, you will be the most popular girl at the party. Yes, you were. Yes, you will. Heck yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of, uh, bikini cornhole is the whole, they should put that on ESPN. (laughs) Second, yeah. second, you have to figure out why. Bikini hot dog eating would be good too. Um, I, I mean, we can just accept that bikini plus anything is yeah, something you're going to watch. Probably good. Yeah. <laughs> why are these guys playing cornhole, right? It's because it's a place where they can be successful. Correct. Right? So figure out the motivation and then sort of back into the, it and then figure out how they can be successful around you. Correct. That's a really good point. We bring this up a lot and this comes up a lot at our live shows. Um, They might think that you're not interested in them in your bikini and you're not creating an Mm -hmm. environment where their confidence can flourish. Why do the men of all ages play so many video games? Mm -hmm. And we hear this from wives a lot too. My husband plays video games, my son, is because that is something that the men feel they can win at. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they are failing 90% of the time in any situation with the women, whether it is parenting, working, take out the garbage, dating you, whatever you're not doing it right. You're not doing it well. You're losing room. So they're like, I'm going to go to a place where I understand what the criteria is and the score is, and I'm going to get good at that. Cornhole is very simple. You do this. You are a whole different ball of wax there in your bikini and how I am rating with you. You have to then create a situation where just talking to you, they can win at just being around you. Right. Yep. I completely agree. You know, Come man the grill and feel, that's why men, they they feel better about that. So that's about you saying, not only are you, you're trying to just win by being a distraction from the cornhole. You have to give these guys more than that, where there's a roadmap, at least to some success with you. Even if it's something as easy as, Hey, that drink that you made me last time was really good. Do you mind making me another one? Like exactly. That's a really good idea. Hey, put down your beanbag come make me a drink and uh, let's have a drink together. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's not too much for you to ask. That's something that he'll, I think, gladly do. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't know what he can do in your world that will make him not feel like a loser. Right. So he's getting this dopamine rush by playing cornhole with the guys, making all of these points, impressing in yeah. his mind, these women in the bikinis while you're sitting yeah. there going, come on, man. Cornhole's not going anywhere. Pickleball is not going anywhere. And we're not going anywhere, but I got to pay for uh, pickleball and cornhole and key lime pie around here. We got to take a quick break. But we will be back. I'm with Sasha Graham, and we are taking on the Summer Loving Mailbag. We'll be back right after this. And we are back. All right, this one is from Danny D, and he sent it through our Facebook page. A couple of years ago, you had a vegan write in to say that she was fine dating a meat eater, except during barbecue season, that the smell and the smoke was too much. 
I am the same way, except with tanning, burning skin. Something about that salty, charred skin taste when girls lay out is such a turnoff. The scent of the oil and the way they sweat a little, I just can't deal with it. Maybe I'm too sensitive to it, but I don't care how great the girls look. If they get too fried or they're just lying out there too long, I'm out. I don't know if I'm looking for advice or just asking if I'm the only one out there who experiences this. Is he comparing (laughs) barbecue season to women tanning? A little bit. Now, I think that's gotten better. We're recording this in Arizona, and even people I know who grew up here say that even during the summers back in the day, they would oil up and they would just fry themselves. They would be like shrimp on the grill. That People don't really do that anymore. We know a little bit more about skin cancer now, I, mean, I think. I, th- I think in certain places. I would guess that there are places, I mean, we were in Key West not too long ago and there was plenty of that happening. Just frying oh, yourself. just like lying on that beach and soaking up every do last day. Do tanning gray. salons still exist or are they all spray now? Like, can I mean, it? again, around here it's all spray tan, but I think there are places where there's still tanning beds. There is a unique... Like some people like the smell of the ocean and some people don't like the smell of the ocean. There is a little bit of like that burning, sweating, hot thing. I think you have an over... Is that the only smell? that That's a weird trigger that you have, Well, there's Danny perfume. D? There's perfume that is mimics that smell. Like, yeah, I know. What an interesting thing that bothers that's him. Like why is this triggering to him? Work. Yeah, what happened yeah. to you, Danny? Yeah, what's it? I don't think you would smell it so bad. I think if you go to the beach... And it mixes with a little, uh, you know, coconut oil smell. That's fine. If you're just like, you don't like the, the aesthetic of it, people aren't burnt. I mean, how old are these people you're hanging out with? Are they just <laughs> frying? Are they, you know, kids and they don't know how, when they're going to burn? Put a little aloe on it, Danny D. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a Danny problem. Like, I feel, yeah, I feel like this mm-hmm. is a Danny problem too. Because yeah. he's not saying he doesn't like the way people look tanned or mm-hmm. over tanned. He just doesn't like... Um, the smell, taste, whatever. Yeah, you are comparing the girls to barbecue. Did you say taste? I think kind of, yeah. We did have that a couple years ago. Yeah. The vegan who wrote in on one of these mailbags mm-hmm. about the thing, and we had to just tell her to just stay inside. Like, yeah. she didn't have to eat their food, but that was her, that was a her problem. Right, right. You know, like, that's the way the meat is prepared. And that's the way the meat is prepared. These girls are <laughs> tanning up for you, Danny D. <laughs> Too bad. If you're saying, I don't care how great the girls look, then just stay away from it. Like, you, you can just see them late. See them other places. Get away from the pool if that bothers you. I feel like maybe he needs to move somewhere cold. Yeah, I do too. Mm-hmm. I know, think, I, he like, didn't say he's from Facebook, but he didn't say where he was from. But yeah, I think you are the only one who experiences this. Yeah, That's maybe. A, that is a you problem, Danny D. Go to a hypnotist. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, move somewhere where you can be more successful. Like, yeah, that's... if if a bunch of girls laying out bothers you, <laughs> um, too bad. Be, be be the vegan, Danny D. Yeah, don't don't, don't uh, indulge. Be the vegan. Be the vegan, Danny oh. D. Yeah, we are. Neither of us is on your side in this. This is a you problem. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one. Let me just preface this with, yes, I know how to swim. I just do not want to get wet, especially not my hair. This shit costs money. I do not want to go into your pool, which is disgusting and filled with germs and is basically a toilet. I, do want, I don't want to go in a lake with God knows what kinds of catfish and other slimy things, and oceans don't even get me started. So stop trying to lure me in under no circumstances. Push me in. Your attempts to coerce me just make me angry and not even want to consider you. I want to stay dry bone dry. Do not splash me. Do not squirt me. I don't know why you think turning me into a wet rat is going to make you more attracted to me. It makes me want nothing to do with you. That is from Betsy Ross via our Instagram. Okay. I want to be friends with her. First of all, I love her so very much. Why do do men ever think pushing a girl in the pool is a good move? I think it's about the contact. Right? What, you just get to, two hands on her back for five seconds? You get to touch somebody who, in a playful way, that you wouldn't... It's not playful. I mean, it goes back to the, we're never really better than pulling pigtails in the third grade. And I mean, um, it's never a good idea. She does not want to get her hair wet. I agree with that. Um, and I'm pro... I don't want to go in any more natural bodies of water either. I'm out. Really? I'm out on the lakes. There are a lot. I feel like that's their habitat, and I don't want some catfish biting my foot. You know what's so funny about that yeah. is that I was just having a conversation about this because I was just swimming in the ocean last mm-hmm. week, and you know, there's fish everywhere. We were snorkeling. It mm-hmm. was incredible. And then my daughter was invited to a water park, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh. right? Like I would so much rather the natural grossness than the human grossness. Well, see, yeah, I um, 
I know these big pools in Vegas with like a thousand people in them. Oh. I have, I travel a lot and I stay in a lot of hotels. Mm-hmm. I will not go into a hotel pool uh, unless it's Tuesday or Wednesday, because I don't trust the weekend. I don't trust a Monday is, is good enough chlorine to recover from the weekend. Well, yeah, it's all <laughs> urine and band-aids, right? It's just gross. Yeah. I agree. I was a guest on your podcast uh, recently, mm-hmm. and we talked about... Um, I played water polo in college and you asked if I was a good swimmer. And I said, yeah, I used to competitively water ski. (laughs) And you looked at me like I was crazy associating water skiing with ability to swim. So little swimming and water skiing. (laughs) But I thought my entire life that because I water skied, it's transitioned nicely to other water things. No. The best part about that was the look on your face as the realization set in that everything you thought was true was a lie. None of my water skiing prowess had anything to do with my ability to swim. And my whole life I was like, oh, I do all good water sports. And now like, I'm not going in the ocean. I'm just not. There's like things. Yeah. 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 I've, I've become such a baby on all this stuff. Give me a, uh, a nice, um, salt water swimming pool that has not been in, uh, for anybody else, but her thing, she's right on this. I've mm-hmm. always wondered that I would never push it. And now if you push her in, there's a 99% chance she's holding her phone. Oh, at all times. And you're mm-hmm. screwing with that too. Don't splash her. Don't dunk her. Oof. All of these things that yeah. I'm, I'm sure I've done at some point in my life. Just, they don't like it. Almost. It's, she's not alone in this. She's not uh, the guy who doesn't like the, the smell where he's the only, most women don't want any part of this. Well, I think that there's a couple different, I mean, obviously there's a lot of different kinds of women, but at a pool party, there's a couple different kinds of women, right? There is the kind that comes dressed to the nines and wearing a gorgeous white bikini and high heels with her hair flat ironed. Yeah. And then there's the girl like me who's in the pool and like playing but water you're, polo, But right? if you're so, already in the pool, that's mm-hmm. different. The pushing in the splat, like you mm-hmm. can tell if she's wet already, right. splash different away. Pools. Yeah. And if she's playing the volleyball in the pool or whatever, mm-hmm. but if she's just sitting on the unicorn float mm-hmm. with her drink and her phone and her phone, <laughs> don't mess with that. Right. Like there's, you know, you can be even a really cool girl, but it, the, the chlorine is not good for the hair. And, um, you've got to respect that. Well, and especially if you're African American and you've had your hair done, yeah. I mean, you do not want to be getting it wet. This I, is not I a agree matter of uh, Betsy. We are on your side, sis. Um, yeah, I asked somebody the other day, when's the last time that their head was underwater? Mm-hmm. Decades. Yeah. Decades. Yeah. She's like, it's just not happening. Mm-hmm. So guys, don't do that. That is a, that is a bad. Betsy, you are right on this. I'm on your side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this is from, I'll, I'll say the name at the end. <laughs> um, do you know the way we would go away on spring break and meet someone and just have fun for five days and we would promise to visit each other's colleges but never do so and it would just end it and it was all fine? Why can't we just be open about having a summer fling? This is what I want. This is how long I want it. This is what I want to do. You are who I want to do it with. Memorial Day to Labor Day, done and done. Who wouldn't be up for that? And that's from Kenneth on the Prowl. And I think that was the plot line to Greece. I think that's what Danny and Sandy did. Um, Do you know what it reminds me of? What? Sports seasons. Yeah, it's a seasonal it's, industry. It's brilliant. Like the seasons that are, or the sports that are so hard when you're a parent and you have kids are things like Taekwondo because there's no end in sight. You just do it forever. Right. right? So it's like, well, I think I like Taekwondo and you sign up and then it just keeps charging your credit card. Yeah. Whereas you play soccer and it's just one season and it's that's season. what he's talking about. And then you go into right? the season. That's what he's talking about. He wants a different type of mindset going into the, that's true. On spring break, you'd go and you'd like fall in love for three days and then she'd go back to Michigan state and you'd go back to Georgia tech and mm-hmm. like, Oh, I'll call you. And you never do. And it's fine. Right. Everybody moves on. Um, and there's different seasonal dating. Like, you know, everybody talks about the, the, the cuffing thing in the, in the, in the winter time, Mm -hmm. but in places like Milwaukee and, and Chicago and Cleveland where rooftop drinking culture, it is just a different set of activities, which leads to a different mindset where it should be a little more casual because you are just kind of running around having fun or whatever. So I don't know how you go into that and been like, listen, I'm looking for a summer girlfriend because here's my attitude on this. And I've said this before on all this. Anytime somebody says, I'm just looking for fun or something short term, I think you're kidding yourself because you're still hoping it works out. You're still hoping you're, you're saying that to emotionally protect yourself. This is all this is. And it won't come. There's no way by the 4th of July, if you really like this girl that you're hoping, Oh my God, I only got six weeks left. You're hoping to like her forever. It's just a longer audition. 
I think so. I think you're protecting yourself by saying, you know what, we're going to try this for three months and see where it goes and whatever, and not set anybody up for that. But if you're going to do that, um, Kenneth on the prowl, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to put up with her, uh, Oyster eating and fishing and whatever she wants to do. Like, you're going to have to be real. If you're going to keep it loose and casual, you're just going to have to roll with everything and go with it. If you're going to do that, though, why would you do that with one person? Why wouldn't you just hook up with a bunch of people for three months? Well, I think that there's some value there, right? Like, it's kind of fun, like, being... And maybe it's just, like, going back to the efficiency thing. Like, it's just easier. You know, you've One got, person summer fling. Mm-hmm. And it is fun. Like, when you're yeah. doing that, like, there I mean, is that's something... that's the whole honeymoon phase, right? It is. You're only getting a honeymoon. And mm. you just go hard for 90 days. And, like, we're just going to have the best time. We're going to go on all the concerts. And we're and we're going to do this. And we're going to... Yeah, there's something to be said for that. It's where not going like, to get stale. I know that me and you, let's dive in and go there. And, um, yeah, I... I, I, I don't necessarily even mind the mindset. I think there are people who would be up for that. I think if you put that on a um, dating profile and you're like, who's up for the best summer of our lives? Mm-hmm. I think there's like a romantic aspect to that where it doesn't seem just like a sex thing. Or here's what he does is he just goes and gets like a summer internship in a different city. <laughs> so then there's just like a really clear beginning and end. I'm only here for three months. Yeah, I don't know like, how old you are, Kenneth. I don't know if you want to be a 52 year old intern, <laughs> but yeah, you put yourself in a position where you're just like, I'm only here for three months. Um, where was Sandy and where was Danny that they only did? They Was she in Australia? Where were they? She came from Australia. Right. So she was an exchange student from Australia and they were, where were they? Oh, well, Rydell High was like probably somewhere in the Midwest. It was, it it's was, Venice High School in real life. No, because That's they, were they, down, they were at the beach. Remember? Oh, they were at the yeah, beach. They were at the beach. I think, were they in Southern California? Well, that's where they shot it. So the play is different from the movie. We get skewed a little bit about that. <laughs> but where were they that they met for a summer and then they didn't make plans? And then they ha- she got because transferred she in? Was, she was supposed to be going back to Australia. Okay, so, so it was supposed to just be a summer fling. She was supposed to be going back to Australia. And instead, she, they ended up staying because her dad's job yeah. continued. So then she started at Rydell High. I have a lot of thoughts about Greece. Which I've gotten into on this podcast. And yet you know so little. He's a total dick the whole time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you know, he leaves her for cha-cha, and he grabs her boob at the drive-in. Cha-cha. There's a lot of stuff going on. Like, Danny's not cool. He, mm-hmm. But the whole summer, she didn't say, hey, where do you go to high school? <laughs> and so then when she's there, like, where do you live? She doesn't contact him. I think you're blaming the victim here. Uh, no, she was just me. having a great summer. Oh, and she didn't find out about like, she just happened to end up at his high school. She didn't know. Maybe she was Kenneth on the prowling it. I think she was. I think huh? she was looking for the fling. We just made that a verb. That's where I'm like pro Danny. <laughs> all right. Pink ladies and uh, T-birds out there. Um, <laughs> all right. That was it. That was a pretty good, crazy, but you guys are nuts out there. It's amazing. We ever get together. Um, all right. This, you did very good. You're very reasonable. I appreciate this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad to contribute. Uh, tell us about your podcast and then we are going to play as you were forewarned worst date or first date. You're going to give us either the greatest first date you've ever had or the worst date. But before you do that, tell us about uh, Sports Will Save Us All. My podcast is called Sports Will Save Us All. It is available wherever you listen to podcasts. And it's really about the unifying power of sports. So whether it is competitive hot dog eating or I have a championship roller skater coming on, I've talked to all sorts of pro athletes and coaches. People are amazing. And I love talking to them and hearing their stories and being both inspired and humbled by them in every single interview. Isn't dating the ultimate sport? Isn't love the ultimate sport? It's certainly competitive. There are a lot of parallels. I got to tell you, I mean, there's a reason why there's so many sports metaphors in dating, right? Be in your best dating shape. That will help. (laughs) Stamina, endurance. Sports will save us all. Dating will save us all. Trust me. uh, You get a lot of curveballs and uh, be be able to hit the curveball. You better buy a lot in uh, dating. All right. Worst date or first date? I'm going to give you both because that's the type of person I am. My okay. best first date was with my husband. Not not surprisingly, we got back to my house and I had been on so many bad dates that I just decided on the way back. I was like, he can either kiss me or ask me out again. And so I then just sat there in his car and he was like, I had a really good time. And I was like, yeah, I did too. And then I just sat there. I just yeah. waited. You know, the good thing about that story, hmm. you were in his car. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't get to pick you guys up anymore. And that um, leads to those moments are gone if you're in your Uber. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Got to let us pick you up. So eventually he said, hey, I'd really like to see you again. I was like, awesome, great. Waved and I jumped out of the car and I went in and called my sister. My worst date was long before that. Well, not long enough before that. But so I lived in L.A. You've lived in L.A. I worked for a movie studio, which meant that I attracted all of these people who wanted to be in movies and in one way or another. So uh, I was at the Dresden one night of all places and they were doing open mic night and this guy got up there and he was a crooner and he had the Frank Sinatra hat and the whole thing. It should have like warned me, but it didn't. Um, I was very into it. He asked me out. His name was Patrick. I do not sing. I told him I do not sing. So he took me to a singing restaurant Mm -hmm. where everybody is expected to sing. Was not my time to shine. So already I was pretty uncomfortable. We got back to my house and he um, got his reel out of his trunk and wanted to show it to me, of course. Mm -hmm. So we went into my house. He puts the reel in. I go to the bathroom. And when I came back, he's sitting on the couch. His reel is playing on my TV and he has his shirt off. I mean, understand there had been Uh, nothing up until this point that would have led him to believe that I would have wanted him to have his shirt off. And I am not about body shaming or hair shaming, but this was literally the hairiest human I have ever (laughs) seen. So the fact that he was leading with taking his shirt off with no invitation to do so in a completely, a room as bright as this one, I um, was both later impressed, you know, like- Ballsy. I mean, incredibly, but it was the- He thinks the real and the shirtless combo platter was going to do it for you? (laughs) I mean, that's all I can imagine, but um, I think that was one of the very rare times that I did ghost somebody because I didn't even know what to say to him. Uh, did you watch the reel? <laughs> I oh. got him out of there. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, that is... What, what are you doing? I yeah, did live guys. by myself and it was a little bit disconcerting to have this stranger yeah. suddenly just mm-hmm. roving in my house that without could. invitation. I don't know what's worse, the reel or the shirtless. <laughs> yeah, very strange. It could have yeah. been the pants. could have been worse. It could have been um, worse. Yeah. Uh, thank you. You were awesome. Thank you. Uh, as far as us, uh, please like, share, review, follow all the good things uh, for this podcast and sports will save us all. Your reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. Shoot us an email, great Great love debate at gmail.com. If you have any thoughts on any of these, um, we are going to maybe revisit if you guys have different opinions on them or things we should have done better. Or if you're a competitive eater, have at it. Uh, go to greatlovedebate.com. There are live, live shows on the calendar. Uh, most of them are shows that I had to make up from two years ago. Um, Good Nights Comedy Club in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're doing one at City Winery again in New York. And right here in the Valley of the Sun, the Tempe Im- Improv. I have not done a show here in the Phoenix area in about five years. So uh, tickets are either on sale or they'll be on sale soon. Greatlovedebate.com. Because as always at the Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time. The Great 